Yo, what's up everybody? It's WH81 here, and welcome today to my second mock draft um, of the, I guess, 2023 NFL season, 2023-24. Um, this is going to probably go out the day before the Super Bowl, so I guess the season technically hasn't ended, but it will be ending soon. The offseason will be upon us. Um, my last mock draft was back in October, so a while ago. Um yeah, so it's been a while. So I'm just excited to talk to y'all and um, give you some options with a we have nine picks in uh, the first round. Of, or not in the first round. God, that would be insane in the draft. Um, so just give you some options of what we can do with those picks. And yeah, without further ado, uh, let's get into it. So with the first pick, with our first pick, um, pick two, I have is going with Drake May, the quarterback from UNC. Uh, obviously, this could be, I think, probably two different players at this point. You know, there's some talk about trading up for Caleb Williams. It doesn't seem like it's going to happen. So this could be two, one of two players at this point, Drake May or Jaden Daniels. And at this point, I think Drake May is the more pro-ready, uh, lower floor, maybe even higher ceiling guy. Uh, he's younger. He has better. He has a better arm, in my opinion. I think he's just more pro-ready. He's stronger, faster. Not faster. He's definitely not faster. He's stronger. He's bigger. He has better arm talent at this point, along with being younger. Um, he's a redshirt sophomore, and he's only 21, whereas Jaden Daniels is 23. Now, listen, I don't dislike Jaden Daniels. I would be overjoyed if that was the pick at the spot. Right now, I I don't really have a preference, but I'm leaning slightly towards May, but I would be overjoyed at either quarterback, basically. So just talking about Drake May, I mean, like I said, he is 6'4", 230. He's a redshirt sophomore. He grew up in North Carolina, went to UNC, plays quarterback, and he's projected to run a 4'6", 40 time. So his stats last year were not the best. He had 24 touchdowns and nine interceptions. Um, but the st- his stats the year before that, I mean, they jump off the page. 38 touchdowns, eight interceptions. He has a low interception total, which is something we need as an organization. Uh, he's rapidly become like one of the most per- talked about prospects in the draft. So he was a successor to Sam Howell at UNC. Maybe in this world, I guess he's going to be a successor to Sam Howell in um on in Washington for the commanders he's good athletic ability with quickness and speed he's a dual threat and he can also be a design runner like there can definitely be some design run plays which is what cliff kingsbury liked to do with patrick mahomes in college caleb williams in college and kyler murray in the nfl he's a prototypical tall qb build uh in, with that he has exceptional mobility and quantifiable elite arm talent he can make great throws he has good touch he has a very strong arm he shows great accuracy across all three levels of the field and occasional flashes of excellent touch like yeah the touch maybe need to be worked on but touch i think is the last thing you worry about you can be a great quarterback without necessarily having the great a great touch and even then his touch isn't bad it's just inconsistent he has high velocity on throws chris police um effectively pushes the ball outside the numbers on the sideline in 2022 this is a big deal to me in 2022 unc had one of the worst offensive lines in college football but he still managed to put up huge numbers despite being under constant pressure we know the washington line is not going to be very good so if we can if we're going to be able to have a quarterback who can play under a not great offensive line that will be awesome i mean that's what we need um, he often takes too long to decide who to throw to, which does put pressure on the offensive line. So coupled with the fact that he can play well under an offensive line, sometimes he makes his offensive line worse. So, you know, given your take, you'll give him, you'll take, sorry. Um, he needs to refine his base mechanics. His footwork isn't great. Um, and that kind of leads to a loss of stability and accuracy in places. And he's prone to making risky decisions, especially under pressure, which does result in turnovers. There's been a lot of comps to Sam Howell, and quite honestly, I don't see it. Yeah, they have some of the same weaknesses. They have some of the same strengths, maybe. But you could say that about almost any quarterback. The only comp, really, is that they both went to UNC, which is a stupid comp. If Drake May was the pick of two, I think me, along with all Washington fans, should be overjoyed. Because this guy is a baller, and he can really bring us to the promised land. All right, with pick 36 in the second round, I have this going with Patrick Paul, the offensive tackle out of Houston. Patrick is projected to be the ninth O-lineman off the board, and he's projected to run a 524-40 time. He's 6'7", 333 pounds. He's a redshirt junior, I believe. Uh, grew up in Houston, went to college in Houston, and uh, he plays left tackle. So like I mentioned with Sam Howell, the offensive line just right now is very messed up. Our offensive line is decrepit. It's awful. Like, I'm just going to say it. Uh, this is no secret. We... Per, like, PFF, per pretty much every outlet you get to, we had one of the worst offensive lines of football, which led to a lot of pressure on Sam. Uh, he is huge, though. I mean, he 
this dude is like big. He's like, <laughs> I mean, I said it, 6'7", 333 pounds. He's effective in space. He usually drops his hips to get leverage and sustain against shorter defenders. He is strong. He dips his shoulder, moves his feet to get outside leverage when needed. So he is a, um, he is a good base, which is good. He's a very fundamental tackle, and he's a very intelligent tackle. Like, he knows what's going on. Uh, he's very fundamental, very, like, sound. He is your prototypical left tackle, similar to how Sam Howell could be talked about as your prototypical prototypical quarterback. Um, he's clearly more comfortable, like, moving forward uh, and run blocking than in pass protecting. So, I mean, I don't know. You know, we're probably going to go with a heavily air raid offense. So, you know, he often gets too high in his set, sacrificing some of his power. He doesn't show great coordination between his upper and lower body. And he's... Um, yeah, that's he like again. Pass protection is going to be a problem with him. But I think with the right coaches, we could coach him up and he could be really good. All right, with our next pick, I have us going with the tight end out of Texas, none other than Jatavion, aka J T Sanders. The tight end is six three two fifty top two fifty two is a junior. Um, is grew up in Texas and went to Texas as seems to be. Um, a recurring theme with our draft picks, but or, at least in this mock, he's projected to be the second tight end off the board, and is projected to run a four five six forty time. Uh, last year at Texas, he put up four hundred six hundred eighty two yards on forty six catches for two touchdowns, and the year before that, he scored five touchdowns. So, Jatavion, I mean, I think he's a great player. I think he could really be someone that adds another level to our offense. We've been lacking tight end in the past few past few years. We've had Logan Thomas, who I like. He's cool, but, I mean, he's not going to be, like, a tight end of the future. He's getting older. We already saw him be pretty bad last year, and us having to rely more on Cole Turner and John Bates. So, Jatavion could be someone who could really, like, maybe hopefully put uh, that issue to rest, maybe be the best tight end we've had since Jordan Reed, which isn't saying much, granted, but... Yeah, still, I mean, I would take a very good starting tight end, which I th- is what I think Jatavion can be. He's a great blocker, takes effective angles, and shows his strength against defenders, specifically in the secondary. He's a good re- receiver, reliable, um, and he's great at going up and high point in the ball. Great deep speed and agility as a route runner, and he's effective after the catch. He shows the potential as a screen receiver to take it the dis- distance. He's encountered some difficulty when facing collegiate edge defenders at the line. So when it comes to blocking, like I said, he's really good on the second level against the secondary. But when it comes to facing some like real big college offensive linemen, he hasn't been the greatest. He's less suited for the traditional tight end blocking roles that require consistent in-line play. He's much going to be much better used as a receiver. He's had a little experience as a blocker, and he will need some time to develop. So, yeah, I mean, he's definitely going to need some time to develop. But I think we can afford that because we do have... A pretty okay, I'd get say, tight end core right now. Like He's not going to have to step in and be the only tight end taking snaps when you, you have a guy like Cole Turner and you have a guy like John Bates. Well, I don't know who will retain. And you have a guy like Logan Thomas, who's been pretty good the past few years. But, yeah, honestly, I don't think that we really need to worry like all that much about, about Jatavion needing some time to develop. All right, with our next pick in round three, pick 67, I have us going with... The wide receiver out of Michigan, Roman Wilson. So, Roman Wilson measures in at 5'10", 186. He's a senior. He grew up in Hawaii and attended Michigan. He's projected to run a 4 3 7 40 time, and he's projected to be the 19th wide receiver off the board. Now, there's a lot of memes going around with Roman that he's a um, he's going to play in XFL or whatever. He's filmed a lot of TikToks. He clearly has, you know, a little bit of a big mouth. But, you know, I think that's someone we need on this team. We need someone who's a little bit more flashy. If you look at it, we haven't really had very fun players. I mean, yeah, Terry's awesome. I love Terry to death. But is Terry, like, a flashy guy who, like, I I don't know. I mean, I think he's a fun guy. I know, like, maybe some off-field issues might irk some people. But I don't know. I think it's all in good fun. He would be, like, a multi-role receiver kind of in our offense. Um... Last year at Michigan, he put up 735 yards um, and scored 10. Oh, wait, hold on. He put up 735 yards and scored 12 touchdowns, uh, along with playing very well in the college football playoff. And when you look at him, I mean, he has elite athletic skills. Like I said, he's projected to run in, run a 4 3 7. 
Um, and he's, he's, I mean, he's an athletic freak. He has long arms, but he, and that allows him to play bigger than his size. And he has a frame that carries a little bit more weight, tracks the belt, ball well downfield, shows some good ball skills. He has strong hands and is extremely competitive. He's an innate sense of timing when it comes to elevating and high pointing balls, which could be really, <laughs> which could be really nice with a uh, direct man's strong arm. He's had some problems when it, like when he drops back with drops when coming back to the action, um, he has some issues against press coverage and sometimes spends too much time fighting at the line of scrimmage. Fights hard for the ball, but he often fights too hard to catch it. So there are many like double catches or contested catch situations where they don't need to be contested catches. And he's not um, he's not physical at all. Like, he's not going to be a blocker and he's not going to be anyone that we can really use in a run after the catch situation when it comes to his physical gifts. Uh, but yeah, I, I do like Roman Wilson. Obviously there's always going to be that thing in the shadow of him doing TikTok, but that doesn't really hurt me too much. And right, next up we have Bucky Irving at pick 100, the running back out of Oregon. Um, Bucky is 5'10", 195, is a junior, uh, grew up in Chicago, Illinois, plays running back and is, went to Oregon this past season. Uh, his stats rushing this year, he had 1,180 yards and 11 touchdowns, and along with 56 receptions, 413 yards, and two touchdowns. Bucky's projected to be the fourth running back off the board this year on Jonathan Brooks, Trey Benson, Blake Corum. So Bucky is a really good player. He's going to be a really nice receiving, small receiving back, um, taking on a role that, you know, maybe Antonio Gibson, if he's leaving, maybe Cliff Kingsbury does want a receiving back. His playmaking ability that's marked by his hyper efficiency and potential to turn any play into touchdowns. He has elite speed for his position, um, contributing to his explosiveness on explosiveness on the field. He accelerates quickly, maintains speed, given given him a, given his size, making him a challenge for defenders to take him down. He's comp- he demonstrates a lot of competitiveness and determination, fighting for extra yards. Um, he does have a lighter frame. So there's a little bit of concern about him being able to be a bell cow, but honestly, I think that's why he's a perfect fit for us because we can have Brian Robinson be that bell cow, and I think we could really take a similar offense to what the Lions did this past season where you saw David Montgomery, who was a bell cow, and then you had a rookie running back who was a dual threat and who was just able to like make explosive plays. Obviously, it would be a little bit less. I mean, I don't think Jameer Gibbs and David Montgomery, like they're not on the same level as... Brian Robinson and Bucky Irving, like Bucky Irving and Brian Robinson would obviously be a couple of tiers below, but I think the sentiment could be the same, and that's really important. Uh, he struggles to decelerate after gaining speed, can't really quickly change directions. His receiving skills are strong, but are primarily limited to like short passes and screens, uh, and he can't block. Can't block. He's small, he's a little bit inexperienced, I think, in that department, so he can't really block. But Bucky Irving, he's also projected to run a 4 4 6 40. I would be really excited if he was on our team. I would I would I would be like pretty much overjoyed. This is probably my second favorite pick of um yeah, of this I guess of this mock draft behind like Drake May or like this pick I'd be the second most excited about. Alright, next up we have Zion Tupuala Fatui. Oh, I might be pronouncing that wrong. He's 63248. Um we would be picking him at pick 102. He is the 32-ranked D lineman on the board and is projected to run a 4-8. He's from Pearl City, Hawaii, and attended Washington. Uh, this season, he had 29 total tackles, four sacks, and one forced fumble. Last, in his freshman year, he had 13 total tackles, 11 solo ones, three forced fumbles, and seven sacks. So he's kind of been on a little bit of a decline since his freshman season, but I think it's going to take someone really nice to get that uh, freshman version of him out of, like, freshman version out of him, and, like, I think that could be Dan Quinn, I mean, listen, I've gone very offense heavy, and I do think this draft should be offense-centric, I mean, we need to improve heavily on, across the board on offense, and I think there are some holes that could be filled, like, in the, in the offseason and free agency, like linebacker, you know, you got a lot of good linebackers, I think we could fill that hole in free agency, but, you know, we, we're still probably gonna need to edge, and Tupa, JT, I'm going to call him JTF. JTF chases well in pursuit. He has the athleticism to play in space if he's asked to drop into coverage. He's prototypical size with little more room on his frame to add weight. Uh, he shows impressive quickness at the snap and plays at a good pad level. He has excellent feel working off blockers and knowing how and when to counter the plays as he goes. He's an excellent motor and shows the stamina to last deep into the fourth quarter. 
However, because of athletically his athletic limitations, uh, ZTF lacks the ceiling of some of this draft's top edge rushers. He doesn't really change direction easily, and he can be laid off the snap. He does have violent hands, but he struggles to fight through blocks with strength and physicality. His playmaking is maximized when he's able to avoid heavy blockages. So when you're looking at ZTF, he doesn't do anything particularly well. And I know that sounds harsh, but nothing jumps off the page when it comes to him. He's not very athletic, and he's not a great just shatter, but he has a great feel for the game, and he has an excellent motor, and he has a good explosiveness. He's a guy who's just blue-collar who's going to work for us, and I think that's a guy that Dan Quinn is going to really value. So I would love for ZTF to come to our team in the fifth round, I believe, is where I have him locked. Uh, next up, we have the safety from Maryland, Bo Braid, coming in at 5'11", 208. He's a senior Grew up in Maryland, attended Maryland. He runs a 4 5 2, 40, and is projected to be the 21st DB off the board. So when you look at Bo Braid, I mean, last year at Maryland, he had 72 total tackles and one pick. The year before that, he had 85 total tackles and two picks. So maybe he should have declared last year, but yeah, it is what it is. Uh, he was a three star recruit out of high school. He takes accurate angles when you look at some of his strength. He takes accurate angles to the ball carrier. He's a strong, aggressive tackler who doesn't back down against the run. He has straight line speed to take a pick to the house. He can punish receivers with closing speed and desire to hit an impact. He's great on route recognition and has click and close ability. He's an explosive mover with quickness and speed. However, he gave far too many big plays in college, and this is especially concerning because he is he has recovery speed to make up for his missteps. Uh, he's inconsistent getting off blocks. He can be a slow step, slow step, step slow to react when the quarterback comes back to his side of the field late in the progression. When he has man, while he has man coverage skills, he can struggle with sitting back in the zone. He's not instinctive and struggles reading outfield routes and tracking the deep ball. Uh, again, another defensive player for Dan Quinn to play around with. We do need safety. We need DB really badly. So I mean, maybe we're assuming cornerback kind of. This guy, this is a guy who could play CV though, but. Let's assume that we deal with cornerback and free agency. Bo Braid could be a great pick here late in the draft. All right, the next player I am going to be talking about that I have us mocked is at pick 180. I have us going with the Rice wide receiver, former, I believe, Nebraska quarterback. Uh, that would be the brother of the offensive player of the year this year. I think he won it, right? Yeah, and um, that would be Luke McCaffrey. Well, why don't I just spit it out? Luke McCaffrey. Luke is coming in at about 61202. He is a junior. Um he grew up in Colorado and attended Rice University. Colorado obviously his father and McCaffrey played for the Broncos. Um so you're going to he's a projected to be the 24th uh wide receiver off the board and last year at Rice he had 992 yards and 13 touchdowns. Okay, so one thing you're going to hear a lot about Luke McCaffrey is that he's only in draft balls because of his name. That is not true. Luke McCaffrey is a great player standalone, and I think he will really be able to separate his legacy from his father's and his brother's. Um, he accelerates quickly. He has great straight line speed. He's often used on deep routes. We do need a deep threat. We haven't had a deep threat. Diami Brown hasn't been that for us. And he's proved, proved to be a force in catching on situations. He's a violent runner who transitions upfield quickly after the catch. He has the speed to pick up chunks of yardage and once he's broken the first tackle. Tackle, he's a savvy natural pass catcher. He grew up around football. Um, and he's a creative runner with good vision in the open field. He's also a possible return specialist, which we've had Dax Milne returning punts for the past couple of years. We just hired a new special teams coordinator, Larry Izzo. So, you know, new. I don't think our new special teams coordinator would be mad at getting a McCaffrey to return kicks for him. He doesn't have the same ability as a run blocker, um, and he has had some problems with drops. Uh, he doesn't always use his hands to secure deep throws, allowing the ball into his pads and chest. He's not a natural wide receiver, basically. He's his big knock. Uh, everything that you'll, Knox you'll kind of hear about him is that he's not a natural wide receiver. He played quarterback, um, I believe, in high school and at Nebraska. So he's not going to be a guy who's going to like be, I guess, a natural receiver. Like He's not used to the position. But I think this could be a really good like return specialist type pick, especially when we've had Dax Mills returning punts. I cannot stress that enough, dude. Dax Mills has been returning punts for my football team for the past two years or whatever it's been. And, um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> that, that's that got to change. So this is one way I think that would be really easy and um, pretty much risk-free of addressing it because we're not drafting Luke to be his brother or his dad. It's just, just to return footballs and maybe sometimes catch a couple deep balls. So I love this pick. 
All right, with our next and final pick, we I have us going at pick 219 with Kyan Bars, the defensive lineman out of USC. Kyan is 6290. Uh, he goes to USC, transferred from Arizona. He was a redshirt senior this year, and he's projected to run a 5-12 40 time. Now, listen, Kyan, this is a late pick. Kyan is a really good, like, kid. He's a really good guy. Um, you know, we... With the departure of Montez Sweat and Chase Young, we're going to need some definitely, like, some, sorry. We're going to need some edge play. And we already got ZTF, but definitely we want, like, we want someone who's tough like this. I mean, he's willing to do the no glory grunt work for USC. That was a, like, headline from Yahoo Sports. So I don't have much on him, honestly. Um, He wasn't, like, amazing in college, but I think this is a character move. I mean... We know Dan Quinn is about character. Do hard shit with good people. That's what he said. One of his favorite things to do. So Kyan Bars, I think, embodies that quote. And this is more of a character pick for Dan Quinn. I do think this is someone Dan Quinn will look very hard at. And a guy who's worth it because he is, even if he is not, he hasn't like showed the best promise in college. I think you want someone with a high motor at this point in the draft. I mean, at this point in the draft, there aren't many very talented people left. When you look at Kyan, he's tough. He's hardworking. So I, I, like, I would like to pick him. Um, but yeah, with that, without further ado, I guess that's, that's the end of this mock draft. Uh, if you're still listening, I really appreciate it. This is a often heavy mock draft. Um, just cause I felt like making it, honestly, I didn't do it on purpose, but a lot of the picks I liked were offensive picks. So, um, leave a like down below. If you enjoyed, subscribe, make sure to ring that, turn on that notification bell so you can get notified every time I go live or upload a video like this one. And if you like commander's content, man, this is the place for you. So without further ado, I'll see y'all later.